you to um, a presenter named uh, Kyle Dart. Kyle's going to be um, talking with us about an application of using GlyphWorks. Um, Kyle Dart started with Toyota um, in a development program rotating through R&D and manufacturing functions. He spent three years at Toyota's largest plant in Kentucky uh, as the body weld shop lead for all machine vision systems and new technologies group. He recently transitioned to the R&D Tech Center, Toyota's Tech Center in Ann Arbor, as an evaluation engineer for body functional systems. And he's now responsible for physical testing and evaluation uh, to support new product development. Today he's going to discuss with us how ENCODE Glyphworks was used at Toyota to process very large data files from a telemetry-based data acquisition system. And we'll talk about the benefits seen by using this system. So Kyle, if you join us, please. Uh, like you mentioned, I'm Kyle I'm from uh, the Tech Center in Ann Arbor. So just recently transitioned there uh, last November, so I'm quite new to the group. Uh, but I'm going to speak today about using GlyphWorks to process large data files. Um, so some of the project background and challenge, uh, like uh, Kurt mentioned, uh, there was too much data. And uh, my manager got tired of looking over at my desk and seeing me like that. Uh, so we looked for a, a new solution. Um, so what we were using was a data acquisition system, uh, which I won't mention because it's not EDAC, uh, although we are having trouble because it doesn't have video capabilities. So it seems like we found a solution to that. Uh, but we were monitoring a whole lot of uh, different items on uh, as in terms of customer usage. Um, but I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, how we monitor door usage on this specific vehicle. Um, we downloaded the uh, data daily uh, just from an FTP server. And really the issue was uh, the very large data files. So we had long events with a small target duration. So basically you'd start recording when the door was open and um, stop recording a few seconds after the door was closed. Um, so as you all know, you might open a door for three seconds or you might leave it open for a minute. So we had a lot of uh, basically useless data and what we were looking at was the actual door closing which took maybe two tenths of a second. So it required uh, a pretty high resolution uh, recording rate of 500 hertz and so at the vehicles we were monitoring, it was about one to one and a half million data points a day. Um, as much as I like looking at Excel that much, um, that was just too much. Uh, the other issue was we had a wide range of characteristics in those events. So your amplitude of a door closing, uh, some people would close it very softly, some would close it very hard. So you get a lot of variation in that. We had uh, simultaneous events. So you know, you'd open two doors at once and close them. Um, and then the, obviously the duration, uh, how long someone opened or left their door open. Uh, there was several channels and no way to automatically process the data. Um, the, there was some consideration given to a macro, Excel macro. Uh, thankfully, that didn't last long. Uh, but basically, some of the first iterations, we processed the data manually and kind of looked through and picked out the peaks manually. Uh, there's clearly error in this, um, and it significantly limits the scope of your project. So the solution we found was GlyphWorks. Um, I now look like that at my desk. <laughs> so it's a much nicer time. I only have one piece of work. Um, so our first flow, I'll, I'll kind of show you the uh, high-level flow that we came up with. So your first is obviously your file input. Um, we would then split the channels and make any adjustments needed. Uh, this would be like calibration factors for uh, Excels. Uh, we then applied a band pass filter uh, to uh, clean up the data. Um, and then we had basically user-defined thresholds, which I'll explain in a second. Uh, but then 
the glyph would essentially, the brains would go through and identify every peak in the data as a unique event, and it would output to a Excel file um, the each occurrence and add it to account for frequency and give you that uh, peak value for closing G. Um, and then we also had a plot just to uh, visual confirmation of what we were, what the glyph was running. Um, so the output data file, uh, like I said, summarized the critical information there uh, with file name, channel name, um, and then frequency count and peak value. The output file went from that one and a half million data points to about 500 where it was just, you had a door close, it registered at this max G, and you had this many before this uh, on this specific door. Um, so huge processing time improvement. So the manually, and I can confirm this, uh, it was about two and a half hours for a, a day's worth of recording. I did a couple of these just as a reference to check the glyph. Uh, it was not fun. Um, but the glyph would run in about 15 minutes. And that was never optimized for time. That was so much faster than what we had that we were happy with it. Um, and so the iteration accuracy, the first iteration, initially was a about 90% and we got it to about 95%. Now the issue with this accuracy had nothing to do with GlyphWorks itself but how the Glyph was built. Um, and we identified the issue as the variation in your closing magnitude was so different uh, that threshold became a problem. So if you can see the graph uh, on the right here, you would have some uh, door closings that were uh, high input. So you would set your threshold initially and there's the chance that you would have more than one peak above that threshold. So that would be counted more than once. Um, and then other people who were really gentle on the door uh, wouldn't even reach that threshold. So the best we could do at setting that threshold would get us about 95% accuracy in terms of counting all the door closings. So iteration two, uh, we found a solution to this. And that was to identify false positive triggers uh, by comparing time information for each event. And if you can see to, um, in the graph, uh, basically, we would set a very low threshold, but we would compare the timestamp of the two peaks. And if it was within a certain amount, uh, which was user defined, then it would only count it once. So you could have four or five peaks that it would see, but because it's all happening within half a second, it can throw that out. And because you can't really open the door and close it that quickly, we weren't concerned with uh, you know, the time difference there. Um, so basically the iteration, the, the flow was the same, except for now you have a check for a double peak and a time threshold input. Um, and then we also added uh, the start and end time to the uh, output list. And what that actually helped us identify was there was a few instances where uh, the duration was uh, a hundredth of a second. It was just noise that somehow it identified. So it let us filter it even more. Uh, the processing time uh, did not change. Uh, it was still just 15 minutes for about a day's worth of data. And the accuracy went up to 99.8%, and that was with that one that registered at a thousandth of a second. Um, it uh, manually, could you could see it manually, but GlyphWorks just couldn't get to that point. Uh, but 99.8% was uh, pretty good in our book, so we went with that. And realistically, that's even better than manual count long term due to just human error. You're going to have uh, more human error the longer you do it. So we considered this basically the best solution. 
Were there any questions on that so far? So reflection, uh, after we got the glyph working, we all high-fived and put up a big banner. Um, so one of the things in our, in our body functional systems group, uh, this was the first time we had ever come in contact with GlyphWorks. Uh, some of the other groups use it for much uh, more in-depth uses, as I'm sure a lot of you do. Uh, but we were basically learning this uh, from scratch and found that just how much capability it had and how flexible it was. You know, adding that second iteration was really quick, mostly because Kurt emailed it to me. Um, the modular style, being able to kind of uh, take out blocks or add blocks and run your data through just a certain, uh, you know, certain flow of that. And like I said, the, it's pretty user friendly and the great support. I have never been trained on GlyphWorks and the other engineer I worked with had never been trained on GlyphWorks. Um, and the second iteration that we needed help on we tried, we weren't capable of developing that programming. Emailed Kurt and in two days, he emailed me a solution. Um, so great customer support. Uh, the cost savings is the biggest uh, benefit to us. Uh, it was 80% reduction in man hours. Um, that is basically taking an estimate, we could get down to eight hours a week of manually processing the data to one and a half hours, uh, which is about how long it took for the glyph to run a week's worth of data. Um, for this project specifically, it saved about 40 man hours. It was a kind of a shortened project. Um, it reduces additional software needs. Um, and I think the biggest learning point for us was this was a pretty simple application of GlyphWorks, in my opinion but it was still a very significant saving. So being able to utilize that in many different areas. Uh, the accuracy improvement, it's clearly a improvement over manually processing the data and it allows larger sample sizes. So you're gonna be able to get more accurate test data because you'll have more data. So in the future, we're going to continue using this uh, for vehicle monitoring studies uh, and we're actually looking to expand both the breadth and depth of use, um, and possibly even get training so Kurt doesn't have to develop all our solutions for us. Uh, so that's all I have. If, uh